Yeah, you want to talk to the Jets? I am too. Oh, yeah. Other people there, aren't you? You got to have a contest. See who can bring them all. <laughs> Place yeah, I got a question. Yes, I go to Iowa State. My yeah. dad and most of my family farms. Huh? And I'll tell you, I mean, I'm telling the vote for Ted Cruz, but the one thing that holds him back is the whole ethanol issue. And uh, I mean, you represent Iowa, and you were you're endorsing Ted Cruz. I don't, I don't think you would be against the people of Iowa and farmers of Iowa. So, uh, could you clarify that? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really. Uh, it's the kind of thing I actually would want to bring up and talk about. And so, so here is it. I started talking with Ted about this midsummer. And my, my goal was to convince him that he should drop any resistance to the RFS. And through those discussions, he said, I have authored legislation that phases it down over five years. But at the same time, we end the subsidies to petroleum. Okay, yeah. That's and, another big and so that, you can look at that as a trade-off. But if he's going to be honest with everybody, eliminating the subsidies for petroleum, you can't hardly look at ethanol and say, but I'm going to protect it. Yeah. And, and so we worked out a policy, uh, Ted Cruz, my, my staff working with his staff, and with Dave Vandergren, who has built more than half of the ethanol plants in Iowa. And I just spoke with him this morning, and it says, Ted Cruz's policy is this. He would direct the EPA to eliminate the 10% the blend wall, the E10 blend wall, open that up so that the market could determine. Even the governor, who has been pretty... Yeah, uh, I better I'm not saying. use the adjective I want to use. <laughs> but um, And he and I spoke yesterday, the governor and I did. But even the governor believes that we'll go up to about an E30 if you just let the market decide. And so, But that's what Ted's policy does. Eliminate the 10% blend wall. Let it go as far as the market will drive it. E30 perhaps is the best guess on that. Dave Vandergren's estimate is that the market would go from now about a $14.5 billion cap that we have that hits that 10% blend wall up to $24 or $25 billion, which is a 60% market share increase. Yeah. You could actually could triple it, theoretically, but yeah. 60, so 60% is a reasonable thing. Then eliminate the, the petroleum uh, uh, benefits that are there, the subsidies. But on top of that, and, and Ted has said this publicly multiple times, but I've talked this through with him, is that he would direct the Justice Department to enforce the Sherman Antitrust Act, the Claimant Clayton Antitrust Act, and the FEC uh, to prevent the petroleum industry from locking ethanol out of the marketplace at the pumps. And that's what that's what, uh, that's what the RFS does now, because yeah. it opens up market access. Well, the Justice Department will address the, through the antitrust laws that we have, and the Justice Department almost always wins. I went back and looked at the records on that, it's like 90 to 4. You know, they win more often than Trump does. <laughs> so, um, but, but so those are, that's the trade-off on it. And he had these four competition, he's four renewable fuels, and he's four opening up the marketplace so it can go as far as it can. But there's another piece I left to that left out is that the RFS expires in 2022. And nobody that's watching this thinks that it can be extended beyond that. So the industry just dug in last Tuesday and they're saying, we're gonna fight like crazy to hang on to the RFS no matter what we have to say or do to hang on to the RFS. But if they get what they're they're willing to fight for then it falls off the table anyway in 2022. What are they going to do then? And I asked him that. I went there, I met with them all, and I asked them, what's your plan? Nobody has a plan except Ted Cruz. So I'd say this, and this is, the, this is where I'd say the objective analysis of this is that if Ted Cruz is elected president and Congress implements the step down of the RFS, he would, I have every confidence, do all the things he said he would do administratively but a step down of the RFS over a five-year period of time gets it down to, 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 uh, down to zero at the same time that it actually ends, so 2022. So you have a risk that you might end up with uh, incrementally less market share over a five-year period of time under the cruise plan, but at the same time, the 10% blend wall is gone and you can start marketing above that 10% blend wall. So do we go? which way do we go from 14.5 billion? I think we go up. Yeah. I'm not certain, but in the second half of that, you know, in the second five years, I know that the cruise plan is better for the long term. It's probably, I'll, I'll say, I think it's better for the short term. I can't guarantee it is, but I'm confident it's better for the long term. Thanks a lot for Did I make it too complex? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I know the team's not here, so.